Are you interested in learning some new shading techniques for your engraving? In this episode, we're going to show you three methods that will take your work to the next level. Hey y'all, welcome back to the studio. I'm Lane Zolke and this is Master Engraver TV. And in today's episode, we're back on the Fega Colt 1911 project where we'll be talking about shading. So let's get straight to the bench and you can follow along as I shade a section of the gun. While I work, I'll discuss three key points that you can employ in your own work to help your scrolls come to life. Let's get to it. Now here's the completed section of the slide that we'll be working on. Over the course of the video, I'll show you the techniques that I use to achieve this look. But for now, why don't you follow along in real time as I shade a small section of the slide. You can see here that I'm taking a break from the shading in order to recut some of the walls of the scroll that I'm working on. Whenever I'm stippling the background, I always end up with a few marks on the walls, and so I always make one last pass to clean those marks away. You can see as I cut that wall that it goes from a kind of a matte finish into a dark reflective finish, and that's what I'm looking for. As I start shading these next two leaves, let's take a look at a diagram that concerns my first tip, and that's following center lines. All too often I see beginners treat shading as nothing more than lines on a leaf, but shading is the only way we have to create areas of light and dark, and there's some basic rules that need to be followed in order to get successful results. To the left you'll see a leaf where little thought was given to the line placement, leading to a flat and lifeless leaf with some problem areas like the blank space on the bottom left indicated by the arrow. On the right you'll see a leaf with some gold lines that indicate the center lines of the two sections of a leaf that's split by a fold. All my shade lines follow parallel to those center lines and they converge at the darkest area of the leaf at the bottom. Here I'm in control of the areas that I want to appear in shadow or highlighted 
as in the white area that indicates the fold. It's this kind of attention to detail that will bring your work to life and set it apart from the rest. As I start this next leaf, I'll offer you my second tip on shading, and that concerns line weight. Again, you'll see two leaves in my diagram. The one on the left is really flat and lifeless, and the biggest reason for that is the shade lines themselves. One of the most important keys to good shading is line taper. A good shade line should start out hair thin and gradually widen as it reaches the darkest area at the base of the leaf. To achieve this, I start the line by barely scooting the heel of the graver along the surface of the metal for a bit before I rotate it upward and start cutting. This is one of the single most important tips that I can offer to give life to your leaves. I'll pause the video here for a moment on the area that I'm shading so you can see just what a heavily tapered shade line will do for your work. The section that I'm cutting here brings us to our third tip of the day, and that's crosshatching. Crosshatching has two basic functions. It darkens areas that we want to be in shade, and it gives some texture to the leaves. There are two main rules on cross hatching. The first is that your hatches should be about one third the depth of your main shade lines. The next rule is that the spacing should always be even, either gradually getting wider as you approach white areas or gradually getting closer together as you approach dark areas, but the spaces should never be random. When seen under magnification, as it is here, the cross-hatching is distinct. 
but under normal viewing conditions, cross hatching should basically disappear into the background. watch closely as I'm shading this section, you can see the two lessons about fine tapering and cross-hatching come together to create depth in this leaf. As I finish this section up, I'll pause the video for a moment so you can see those finely tapered shade lines on the inside of this leaf up close. As we finish the video, the last thing I'll do is add the Fega initials into the banner on the left side of the screen.
Well, I hope you enjoyed the episode and hopefully you learned something that you can use in your own work. For the next installment of the Colt 1911 project, we'll be talking about background removal. I'll show you some of the techniques that I use to lower the background for high relief engraving. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification button so you know when that episode is available. Until the next time, thanks for watching. Thank you.